All right, folks. <laughs> Texas. Uh, they're facing a federal lawsuit over the state's new law banning uh, most abortions. The Department of Justice says the law was enacted in open defiance of the U.S. Constitution. Attorney General Merrick Garland is asking a federal judge to declare the law is invalid, to enjoin its enforcement, and to protect the rights that Texas has violated. The is set out in detail in our complaint. Its basis is as follows. SB 8 bans nearly all abortions in the state after six weeks of pregnancy, before many women even know they are pregnant, and months before a pregnancy is viable. It does so even in cases of rape, sexual abuse, or incest. And it further prohibits any effort to aid the doctors who provide pre-viability abortions or the women who seek them. The act is clearly unconstitutional under long-standing Supreme Court precedent. Those precedents hold, in the words of Planned Parenthood versus Casey, that, quote, regardless of whether exceptions are made for particular circumstances, a state may not prohibit any woman from making the ultimate decision to terminate her pregnancy before viability. Texas does not dispute that its statute violates Supreme Court precedent. Instead, the statute includes an unprecedented scheme to, in the Chief Justice's words, quote, insulate the state from responsibility, close quote. It does not rely on the state's executive branch to enforce the law, as is the norm in Texas and everywhere else. Rather, the statute deputizes all private citizens without any showing of personal connection or injury to serve as bounty hunters, authorized to recover at least $10,000 per claim from individuals who facilitate a woman's exercise of her constitutional rights. The obvious and expressly acknowledged intention of this statutory scheme is to prevent women from exercising their constitutional rights by thwarting judicial review for as long as possible. Thus far, the law has had its intended effect. Because the statute makes it too risky for an abortion clinic to stay open, abortion providers have ceased providing. The Texas law known as SB 8 uh, prohibits abortions uh, once medical professionals can detect cardiac activity usually around six weeks. That's before uh, some women even know they are pregnant. This law also leaves, law, leaves enforcement to private citizens through civil lawsuits instead of criminal prosecutions. Uh, go to the panel. Uh, Greg, this is the key here. The Department of Justice says you cannot pass a law to just let citizens do whatever the hell they want to do and violate the rights of other citizens by basically putting bounties on them. Mm -hmm. Well, I think actually you can. I think you can. This is, this goes back to a case in the 1920s, Giles versus Alabama, Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes, when confronted with clear voter suppression in the apartheid laws of the time in Alabama, said we could rule on behalf of the black people who were having their right to vote uh, infringed upon, in fact, eliminated. However, who's going to enforce it? So what you see in the white national states of the former confederacy, I say former confederacy, but they're still the confederacy because it's clearly if there were law in place, uh, this would be an up and a shut case. What, you, what we're seeing is, again, a test of federalism. All these things are of a, of a piece. You see, all over the country, but in the South where they control these state legislatures, and we know that 30 of the state legislatures of the country are controlled by the white nationalist party, they want to put in place the country they want to live in. You know, the words of Dixie are still in their, in their ears. Oh, I wish I was in the land of cotton. In the land of cotton, you can brutally kill black women and men. In the land of cotton, women have no rights. And so when, when, when you hear Merrick Garland there with Vanita Gupta, who is where we should place our faith in, Gupta and Kristen Clark, I mean, Merrick Garland, whatever, but we force him into it, right? But what we hear, when Merrick Garland said, he was very careful when he used the phrase bounty hunter, he's drawing from Sonia Sotomayor's dissent when she said the state of Texas has deputized private citizens and made them bounty hunters who can now get, and, they're, and Texas is offering cash prizes to these bounty hunters for civilly prosecuting their neighbors' private, she didn't use the word private, but she's implied private, medical procedures. Now, 
What is that? What, what, so what do we see today? The United States now substituting itself as plaintiff for the Texas plaintiff that tried a couple of weeks ago is now going to sue Texas and force these white nationalists, five white nationalists, including, well, yeah, five white nationalists, including Clarence Thomas. See, white nationalists, you don't have to, it's not a phenotype, it's not a race, it's a concept, and, and he's, a, he's a rabid white nationalist as well, Clarence Thomas. They are going to attack and force them to once again affirm their declaration by not intervening, because they're also going to go for an injunction. They're going to say that this deputizing of state action is constitutional. That contradicts the Constitution on a couple of reasons, and I won't go too deep into the detail, but I'll mention this. One is state action. See, Texas threw the rock and hit its hand by saying, we can't enforce this law. No, but by deputizing private citizens, you have done the equivalent of allowing the Klan to outright operate like the police. Once state action is involved, you have now triggered the constitutional crime. You've triggered the constitutional, uh, uh, um, uh, the constitutional violation. So this is an open and shut case. But, but, but I suspect what the Supreme Court will do is not allow for an injunction, let this work its way through the courts. And as in that biology lesson that uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez gave the country, including that shovel mouth piece of human refuse, the governor of Texas, as she reminded him, most people don't even know. Most women don't even know they're pregnant because if you miss your period and you late by two weeks, it could be stress, it could be anything else, and I'm not about to get into that. I'm just listening to her basically tell him, you're not a man, you're not a human being, and you want your state to be like every other white national state. You want to turn this into the handmaid's tale. And yet, since you got a handmaid on the court with that last appointment, you think you have the numbers to do it. So I guess we're going to find out. Greasy. Yeah, I mean, one thing I will say, to the extent that, you know, the federal government has the ability to be effective here, and as Dr. Carl pointed out, it really boils down to the Supreme Court. If they're going to go all in with their white supremacy and go all in with their anti-woman, um, you know, philosophy, but to the extent that the federal government can be effective, this is why elections matter, because you do have a Benita Gupta, as you pointed out, Dr. Carr and a Kristen Clark, who could push a uh, Merrick Garland to, to take up this case. If we still had William Barr, forget about it. You know, th this wouldn't even be possible. And this type of uh, legal activity would be left to organizations like the NAACP Legal Defense Fund and Planned Parenthood, et cetera, et cetera. So... It's really important that the federal government is involved with this, that they're putting all of their resources behind it. Will it be successful? There's no guarantee about that. But the one other thing I do want to say is, for those who think that this is just simply a woman issue, the bounty mm -hmm. part is the part that people should really, really, mm -hmm. really, really, really be very troubled with. Because right now, it's a bounty on abortion providers, or what the broad topic an Uber driver could be considered an abortion provider. But what's the next bounty on? The next That's bounty right. could be on your head. And do Come we want to deputize white folks predominantly, because we know that's going to be the main people all up in everybody's business, but we want to deputize white people. They see a black man driving somebody in the car all of a sudden. I think he's an abortion provider. That's right. No, we don't want to do that. Some of y'all don't want to turn over your vaccine cards. You talk about HIPAA, even though that ain't a HIPAA violation and all kind of other stuff. But then when it comes to a woman's privacy, because that's what Roe v. Wade was really about, was privacy, now mm -hmm. y'all up in everybody's business. So like I said, the bounty today is on abortion providers, but what's the next bounty? That, if you don't have any other concern about it, you think it's a woman issue, you think, well, I already had my kids, I'm not concerned about it, or I don't plan on having kids, the bounty issue, because the bounty could be on your head, the bounty could be on your brothers, your husbands, your sons, these are not just women that are affected by it, it could be on anybody's head. And I don't trust that. For Raj, Yeah, I mean, I think just to, let's just keep it clear, the bounty that we're talking about is $10,000. That's what Merrick Garland said, that the law deputizes private citizens to serve as bounty hunters authorized to recover at least $10,000 per claim from individuals who facilitate a woman's exercise of her constitutional rights. Again, we have a human rights issue that becomes a, a, a money grab. So if you have an individual who is looking for a come up, and this is, this is I mean, look, we got to talk about the fact that this is the sad state of affairs that we find our citizens, the citizens of America in, that you got to put a price attached to human beings at all costs. 
So we're capitalizing on the pain of women. And then let's look at what has happened with the, uh, uh, the Texas uh, state's, uh, state's attorney had to say about this whole situation. He tweeted out that the administration, speaking of the Biden administration, quote, should focus on fixing the border crisis, Afghanistan, the economy, and countless other disasters instead of meddling in state sovereign rights. Well, first of all, we know Ken Paxton's stupid. Uh, and he needs <laughs> and he needs to be in prison with his corrupt ass. So that's right. right. And so that's right. I mean, that's just that's just a reality. Well, that's that whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Seek.com is a black-owned company uh, founded by Mary Spio. It's a virtual reality company where you can actually go there and look at their uh, virtual reality content. A couple of devices they actually have for sale that you might be interested in. First off, their VR headset allows for you to slide your phone right in and experience that virtual reality content uh, on their site or watch a 360-degree video. Also, uh, there are 360-degree headphones, a tremendous base used for gaming, Bluetooth, phone calls, you name it. Uh, folks, you can get these two at Seek. Dot com using this promo code RMVIP21, RMVIP21. Uh, you buy one or the other, or even both, a portion of the proceeds come back to us here at Roland Martin Unfiltered. And so uh, we want you to check out Seek.com and give it a try.